Can we repair and rebuild our body? Can we stay strong and healthy? The Apostle Paul used the metaphor of running race to help us understand reality of Christian life. In 1 Corinthians 9, Paul encouraged us to run the race of life in such a way as to win it and receive our heavenly reward. We are not to run aimlessly, but with focus and self-control. We discipline our bodies and keep them under control so that they will help us run our race and not trip us up. We should aim to run our race well, and not just spiritual health, but also our physical health. My desire is to help you run your race well, and ultimately my purpose of sharing this is to glorify God. I want to praise Him for His design in creation and in our bodies. I have shared some practical and spiritual reasons why we should care about our health. But the good news that I am excited to share is that we aren't alone in this. Through His Word and His design in nature, God has provided the thing we need to stay strong and healthy, joyful and prepared to excel in this race of life. And it has all come down to salt. Yes, salt. But I am talking about whole salt. It is the beginning of hope for my health and strength for me to keep the race going here on earth. And I hope for yours too. So we can share the good news of Jesus and point others believers to see God and his kindness and mercy and the amazing gift of salt. Salt is vital for life even in the most basic form as sodium chloride. In whole salt, however, we find a package designed by God contain the benefit of four or more of the most essential nutrients in our bodies, working together to create the bodily response intended by our Creator. Whole salt was the missing piece of the puzzle. Before finding whole salt, I have learned and applied so much to my health, after trying to live and eat perfectly, I soon realized that perfection was an impossible goal. Perfection is for our life in heaven, but it is not something we can attain here in the falling world. But I needed something to help me over the finishing line. Whole salt filled that gap. As I explored the history of salt, the more convinced I became that God gave us this mineral as a gift a part of common grace for all mankind. He put salt in nature to help make our food taste good, to help us preserve our foods, and to help nourish our body. The more we learn about whole salt and its role for preserving and sustaining life, the more encouraged I became to use salt without fear. When I say that I use whole salt, I want to be clear that I wasn't just sprinkling on my food. I didn't just sprinkle a little salt on my food and get well. I use a lot, a whole lot of whole salt. Yes, I sprinkle it on my food generous amount. However, I was never willing to ruin my food in the process. I am a chef after all. Still, it's safe to say that I haven't eaten bland meal in a very long time. I use and have continued to use good amount of salt on my food. So let's see if I can get you to understand why it is impossible for us to eat our way to good health without depending on salt. Real salt, unrefined whole salt, made with a simple substance that is available to everyone. Salt, not the white processed grains on table salt of table salt, found in most home and restaurant everywhere. But whole salt, whole salt is simply salt that it is found in nature, composed primarily of sodium and chloride, the two elements that make up of what we commonly call salt, but also containing a variety of minerals and other elements. Depending on its composition, whole salt can be found in spectrum of color, from white, blue, or gray to pink, red, or even black. In its natural form, all salt begins as whole salt, 
and source of salt can be found throughout the world and every continent. Salt generally comes from two sources. The first is rock salt, mined from underground salt beds, created through evaporation of pre-existing large bodies of salt water. If you have seen pink salt in the store, this is an example of rock salt. The second source of sea salt from ocean water, such as the gray salt, that is commonly available. Varieties of salt from different areas of the world are similar that they are primarily sodium and chloride, sand that is the foundation of salt. But the mineral content is where some interesting difference can be seen. In addition to sodium and chloride, whole salts typically contain minerals, including calcium, potassium, sulfur, magnesium. However, the amounts of those minerals found in different salt can differ greatly. Pink salt from Pakistan, for instance, tend to be higher in calcium, sulfur, and potassium, with very little magnesium. Gray salt from coast of France tends to be higher in magnesium and sulfur, while having less calcium and potassium. Salt from deposit near Redmond, Utah, in the United States is similar to pink salt from Pakistan, but with less potassium, higher calcium, and more magnesium. There are numbers of minerals such as zinc, selenium, iron, manganese, and other that are found in smaller quantities that also vary quite a bit from salt to salt. Why some salt, such as pink rock salt and the gray sea salt I, I mentioned, can be described as mineral rich. Not all whole salts contain significant quantities of minerals and other than sodium and chloride. The mineral content can affect the color and taste. But that's not the main reason why mineral content is such a big deal. The reason it is important to choose mineral-rich salt is that these minerals actually perform vital function in the body. Minerals are one of the essential nutrients for the body. These nutrients are termed as essential because of the body cannot function properly without them, but it also cannot make them on its own or at least not in significant amounts. In addition to minerals, the other essential nutrients include vitamins, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and water. Vitamins and minerals are generally required in a small dose when compared to other nutrients and even with these two groups. Some nutrients are needed in large supply than others. Sen whole salt contain minerals and not vitamins. I will focus on minerals that are needed by our bodies. The minerals can be divided into two groups, macro minerals and trace minerals. The macro minerals are nutrients that we need in large quantities and include calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, chloride, sulfur, and phosphate. Trace minerals are needed in small amounts and include minerals such as iron, copper, selenium, zinc, manganese, iodide, cobalt, and fluoride, among others in even smaller amounts. If you have been paying attention, you might already have noticed some interesting similarities between contents of whole salt and the minerals required by the body. Of the seven macro minerals, those required by the body in a large amount. Six are mineral typically found in the highest quantities in mineral-rich whole salt. In addition, many of the most vital trace minerals are also found in whole salt. In whole salt, we have something that is found in nature, made to be eaten, and contains many essential nutrients for life. The problem comes in picking particular whole salt for use. As I mentioned, the, comp the composition of the various whole salt differ from some have more magnesium, potassium, or calcium. 
Some contain minerals not found in other salt, and some salt have very little mineral content at all, aside from sodium and chloride. Pick the wrong salt, and you might miss much of the benefit of consuming whole salt. When I began using and learning about whole salt, I was surprised to see just how much the mineral content differs. Some salt contain over 100 times more of one particular mineral when compared with another salt. Some salts have relatively high mineral content. Some salts contain over 100 times more of one particular mineral when compared with another salt. Some salts have relatively high mineral content, while others are seriously lack when compared with others. Only God knows why He makes this salt differently. But it was clear to me that each of the more mineral-rich salts would have valuable benefits. Unrefined whole salt is an incredible, valuable tool, but it is not the only tool. But it is the first tool and the most important, and it was the key to helping my body to heal. And it didn't come from cutting-edge research or out of laboratory. I simply discovered an essential healing gift that God gave to men from the creation of the world. In the next video, I will explain why chloride, the other main component of salt, is an essential part of the body's relatively dedicated efforts to produce and maintain stomach acid. We cannot break down protein without chloride. There are some foods that contain chloride. But the abundance of chloride is in salt. But it must be unrefined whole salt, the way that God designed for us to use.